Beef Quality Assurance. It's about doing the right thing. It's about reliable record keeping, good animal handling practices, and effective environmental management. It's also about proper and safe animal health product usage and ensuring that your production practices result in beef that's safe, nutritious, and wholesome. Producers need to be diligent in their efforts to reduce or eliminate the frequency of injection site lesions. Why? Because lesions are bad business. Lesions make your product tougher and less desirable. A single injection improperly administered into muscle can damage or cause toughness in an area that's larger than your fist. Recent Chekhov-funded research shows that injection sites can cause toughness in meat six inches in diameter from the location of administration. Lesions don't go away either. In fact, they remain with the animal for its entire life, oftentimes showing up years later in beef carcasses. Recently, we took a look at the impacts of injection site lesions, and we'd like to share with you what we found. Two weeks prior to evaluation of lesions, we administered both subcutaneous and intramuscular injections into the neck, shoulder, as well as the hindquarter regions of test cattle. We then evaluated the carcasses for the negative impacts of injections. We'll start with the front of the animal and work our way to the chuck and round. We administered 2 cc injections of a modified live vaccine in the neck. One was given sub-Q and the other IM. While there is some discoloration from the sub-Q injection on the carcass, it's located in an area that can be detected and easily trimmed. The second 2 cc IM injection resulted in a lesion in the neck muscle. Choose the more carcass-friendly route of administration, such as sub-Q, to reduce incidence of intramuscular lesions. In addition, we administered 20 cc's of an antibiotic using the intravenous method into the vein of the lower neck. However, this injection went outside the vein and resulted in a lesion and a prolonged drug withdrawal period for the antibiotic. Next, we administered 5 cc's of an oil-based killed vaccine behind the shoulder. While this injection was intended to be administered sub-Q, the 5 8 inch needle unintentionally penetrated into the muscle tissue below the skin and resulted in a lesion. This footage demonstrates the muscular irritation that can be caused when products are administered improperly. The area behind the shoulder is often thought to be an approved injection region. This is incorrect. Injections in this region are in violation of BQA standards. An IM injection of 10 cc's was administered behind the shoulder and, as you can see, resulted in irritation that traveled down the needle track and muscle, causing inflammation in the meaty part of the shoulder. Another region that you should avoid injecting into is the hindquarter. Like the area behind the shoulder, injections in this region are in violation of BQA standards. Located in the lower right region of the rump, this injection site received 10 cc's of antibiotic. This lesion can clearly be seen running up and down the length of several valuable serial cuts in this muscle region. On the left side of the rump, we administered 10 cc's of vitamin A, D, and E using the IM method. The resulting lesion was found in the center of the eye of round, a valuable cut, and traveled for several inches along the length of the muscle. This is an undesirable situation which producers and veterinarians should avoid at all costs because of the amount of high-quality product that's destroyed due to improper injection management. We also administered 10 cc's of antibiotic IM in the top butt. This injection, given in violation of BQA standards, damaged a great deal of valuable muscle tissue and is fluid-filled. A fluid-filled lesion is an indication of infection and must be trimmed from carcasses during processing as it will contaminate product in the surrounding area. The injection triangle is located directly in front of the shoulder, below the nuchal ligament, and above the vertebrae and jugular vein. Keep in mind that accidentally injecting into the ligament will result in discomfort and pain for your cattle, reduced feed intake, and performance in the pasture or feedlot. The injection triangle is the preferred location for all injections because it's an area of the carcass producing lower value products for the food service and retail industries. Higher valued cuts, such as the chuck or round, are protected from lesions using this technique. 
Most properly administered sub-Q lesions given in the neck region are often removed with the hide during processing and thus do not impact the value of the carcass. Now that you've seen what the problem is, let's talk about BQA certified steps you can take to prevent or minimize the frequency of injection site lesions. First, always read and follow label and labeling instructions of animal health products. Use the most carcass-friendly route of administration allowed on the label, preferably sub-Q. Second, administer all animal health products, without exception, in the approved region called the injection triangle. Keep in mind, there is a lymph node located near the point of the shoulder. Injecting directly into this node can damage this organ and negatively impact the animal's immune system. Cattle can also bruise this lymph node and tissue if they bang their shoulders against the head gate. Head gates often cover up the injection triangle, making it difficult or impossible to properly inject IM products. If this is the case, loosen the squeeze chute or head gate area and allow the animal to back up a few inches. Third, administer a maximum of 10 cc's per injection site. Injecting more than this results in significant tissue damage. Fourth, space injections at least 4 inches apart, or about the width of your hand. Fifth, change needles frequently. Sixth, when administering sub-Q injections, use the tenting method and a 5 8 inch needle. Sub-Q injection should be administered by properly tenting the skin and using a 5 8 inch needle to avoid injecting directly into the muscle. The 5 8 inch needle is long enough to penetrate the hide, but it can also penetrate into valuable muscle if you're not careful. Seventh, if you administer dewlap injections at branding, restrain the animal on its side. Pull the front leg back and locate the dewlap, which is the flap of skin that hangs from the throat that follows the neck down to the brisket region. Grasp the skin using the tenting technique and conduct the sub-Q injection. Remember to stay ahead of the slope of the shoulder when administering injections. Eighth, if you're using a modified live virus vaccine, make sure you administer it within one hour of the time of mixing. Also, make sure you keep vaccines cool and out of sunlight. Ninth, never enter a bottle with a used or dirty needle. Tenth, always adhere to good animal handling practices because quiet animals are easier to work, easier on you and your equipment, and easier to ensure you've administered injections properly. It's a good management practice to handle cattle as calmly and quietly as possible as they enter the chute. Bruised tissue can take as long as 60 to 90 days to heal. Since 1987, when the beef industry launched the nationwide Beef Quality Assurance Program, producers have made great strides in improving the safety and quality of their products. While lesions do not represent a food safety issue, they are a food quality problem. And when they occur, they reflect on each of us and how we conduct our businesses. Lesions also cost your industry. According to National Beef Quality Audits, Injection site lesions result in a $108 million loss each year, or about $3.59 for every fed animal produced. In market cows and bulls, the loss is about $9 million annually. Simply put, proper injection site management is about doing the right thing. It's about doing the right thing for your cattle. It's about doing the right thing for your business and your industry. And it's about producing the right kind of high-quality products for consumers. Doing the right thing. That's the BQA way. <laughs>